Welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike, and today I'm gonna to be checking out the PSVR2 PC adapter. It just released last week, and it allows you to connect your PSVR2 headset to a gaming PC to play PC VR games. I'll be showing you what comes in the box, how to set it up. I'll test it out with a bunch of games. I'll let you know if it's worth it or not, and how the PSVR2 stacks up against the MetaQuest 3 as a PC VR headset. So, let's dive in. So at the time of this video, the best way to get the PSVR2 PC adapter is to order one directly from the PlayStation Direct website. It's 60 US dollars or 50 British pounds. Inside the box, you get a quick start guide, the PSVR2 PC adapter itself, and a power brick. Now, while most of us will need to use this adapter, people that have an older generation 20 series NVIDIA graphics card or AMD 6000 or 7000 series graphics cards won't actually need this adapter. You see, these older cards were equipped with a USB-C virtual link connector at the back, meaning that you can plug the PSVR2 directly into them without the need of this adapter. It's a real shame that Virtual Link never really took off, and support for it was sadly dropped in 2020. But back to the adapter. On the front, you have a single USB-C port, which is where you plug in the PSVR2 headset. On the back, you have a power port, a hardwired USB 3 cable in the middle, and a DisplayPort connection on the right. Weirdly, a DisplayPort cable is not included in the box with the adapter, so you'll need to order one separately. Why Sony didn't include one in the box is completely beyond me, but I ordered this one from Amazon, which works perfectly fine. One crazy thing that I found when experimenting with all this stuff is that the BizLink adapter sold by Vario also works great to be able to connect the PSVR2 to a PC, but it is three times the price, so I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy one instead of the official adapter. So, once I got all this hardware connected up to my PC, I downloaded the free PlayStation VR2 Steam app and started the setup process. But almost immediately, I came across a problem with the Sense controllers. You see, you're gonna need a good Bluetooth connection to be able to connect your PSVR2 Sense controllers to your PC and have reliable tracking. And I'm not the only one that struggled with this. Look, I'm sorry everyone, but this has been one of the most frustrating, aggravating, time-consuming processes I've ever been through. Sony should have really included a decent Bluetooth solution in the box or built one into the adapter itself, as this would have prevented a lot of these Bluetooth compatibility and range issues. It's a massive oversight from Sony, in my opinion. The problem was that my motherboard's built-in Bluetooth just didn't have enough range to cover my play space, so I ended up using a TP-Link UB500 USB Bluetooth dongle paired with a 5 meter USB extension cable to bring the dongle as close to my play space as possible. This is the only way I could get a decent connection without experiencing controller tracking issues. Another tip if you're having Bluetooth problems yourself is to make sure you disable your motherboard's built-in Bluetooth in the Windows Device Manager if you're using a separate Bluetooth dongle like me, and to make sure that you download the latest Bluetooth drivers from the manufacturer's website. Links to these products, if you need them, are in the description below. So when I eventually got up and running, I scanned my room and I tested out a bunch of PC VR games to put the PSVR2 headset through its paces. One of the things I noticed straight away when using the PSVR2 on PC was the Sense Controller's haptics. While you don't get adaptive trigger support on PC, the Sense Controllers do have a really nice rumble to them. And now that my Bluetooth issues were resolved, the tracking held up really nicely and I was able to get an almost perfect score on my favorite Beat Saber track on Expert. Of course, a must play if you're new to PC VR is Half-Life Alex, which just happens to have a 66% off discount on Steam right now up until the 19th of August, so get it cheap while you can. One big benefit of using the PSVR2 with a PC is that unlike the Quest, it has a direct DisplayPort connection to your PC, so you don't get any compression or latency issues. When using a link cable with Quest or when using wireless solutions with a Quest, this can add latency if you don't have the optimum setup. The result is a slight increase in response time, making VR games using the PSVR2 feel very fluid and snappy, especially if you can run them at 120 frames per second. 
You can knock it down to 90 frames per second in the Steam VR settings menu if your PC is struggling. Two downsides of using the PSVR 2 with a PC are Mura, which is still visible at times, and the small sweet spot due to the PSVR 2's Fresnel lenses. The Quest 3's pancake lenses are far superior. They offer a huge sweet spot and much better edge-to-edge -edge clarity. The game that I'm playing here is Gunman Contracts. It's a hybrid game that's being built from the ground up to be played flat or in VR. I'm actually involved with the team under my new publishing company, 2080 Games, and we're working really hard to make this one of the best shooters in VR. It's still very early days, but it's already so much fun to play. If you like over-the-top action movies like John Wick, you'll absolutely love this, and you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Another thing to bear in mind with the PSVR 2 is that eye tracking isn't supported on PC. Well, not officially. It might come later down the line as a mod from the community for use in social VR games like VRChat and possibly to take advantage of dynamic foveated rendering, but we'll just have to wait and see what the community comes up with. This game is Subside, by the way. It's coming soon to Steam, but there's a free demo available right now. I'd highly recommend it with the PSVR 2, as the water, reflections, and wildlife look absolutely stunning in this headset. It's beautiful and very chill to play, and personally, I'm really looking forward to this one. Another benefit of choosing the PSVR 2 as a PC VR headset is that it has OLED displays, unlike the Quest 3 that uses LCD displays. In really dark games, like when using night vision goggles on a night mission in Tactical Assault VR, it works incredibly well, as the black levels are really deep black, whereas the Quest can look a little grey and washed out in comparison. One of the other things I haven't heard people talk about is the built-in microphone on the PSVR 2. This is what the PSVR 2's built-in microphone sounds like. While it's not the best microphone in VR, it's certainly good enough for comms in games like Tactical Assault and social VR games like VR Chat. So ultimately, would I recommend the PSVR 2 as a PC VR headset? Well, despite the issues I had with the Bluetooth, it is a solid choice. There's actually only two headsets that I would recommend for most people in 2024. That's the Quest 3 and the PSVR 2. The Valve Index is getting a bit old in the tooth now, and it's still very expensive despite being over four years old. Hopefully the rumors about Deckard are true, and we get a new VR headset from Valve in the near future. The Quest 3 and PSVR 2 have a similar price point at around 500 US dollars or 500 British pounds, although the PSVR 2 was on sale recently down to 350 US dollars, 350 British pounds, which was a fantastic deal. So if it does go on sale again, make sure to snap one up while you can, as it's an absolute no-brainer at that bargain price. To round this up, I wanted to highlight some excellent work from a Redditor by the name of F3 Hunter. They took some incredible through-the-lens images of both PSVR 2 and Quest 3 side-by-side, side, which I think are a fair representation of what they both look like in the headset. I've linked to the original post in the description below if you want to check out all the high-res images. But to summarize my opinion on the two headsets, PSVR 2 has better black levels and colors being OLED, the Quest 3 has a bigger sweet spot due to the excellent pancake lenses, and it does look a bit sharper. PSVR 2 feels more responsive, being a direct display port connection. Quest 3 can be played wirelessly, and of course has access to a huge standalone library of both VR and mixed reality content. So that's the PSVR 2 PC adapter. If you have a PSVR 2 headset for the PS5 and happen to have a powerful gaming PC already, then it's a no-brainer recommendation from me to buy this adapter, as long as you can resolve the Bluetooth issues. If you're torn between the Quest 3 and the PSVR 2 for PC VR only, it is a tough call to be honest and will come down to what features are most important to you, and hopefully this video has helped you out make an informed decision. Both are great headsets in my opinion, and I'm just happy that Sony have gone down this route of making it compatible with the PC. It's just a shame that PSVR 2 isn't getting the love and support from Sony on their own platform, the PS5. But again, this is all just my opinion. Please let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Leave a cheeky little like if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs> Cheers.